This video is brought to you by Rotato. Build beautiful app showcases, designs, and 3D mockups in any device with Rotato. Head to iosacademy.io slash Rotato to get your copy now. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a primer into machine learning on iOS with Core ML. So before I go over this little page here on Apple's website, let's take a look at what we're going to be building. So here's the app we're going to be putting together. We've got an image and a label, and we've got a machine learning model under the hood. So if we go ahead and tap that image, it's going to ask us to pick a photo. So there is our photo. We run it through our fancy machine learning analysis, and it tells us it's a botanical garden. Let's do that one more time. Let's go ahead and pick this one here. And this one tells us it's a coast, which is you know, fairly close since we've got, you know, water and a coastline here with uh, some of this nature. But we'll take a look at how to set this up, you know, how to, you know, get an input, pass it to the model, get an output, all that good stuff. So Core ML has been something I've been spending a ton of time with lately. Um, here is Apple's machine learning page. They talk about, you know, some of the things that Core ML offers, some of the things that are built in. There's Create ML, which I'll be doing videos on later on. But Take a look at this if you haven't done so already. Uh, machine learning isn't as scary as a lot of people make it out to be. Uh, but if that all sounds good, make sure you start by absolutely destroying that like button down below. Helps out all the videos tremendously. Super appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. That all said, let's get into machine learning on iOS. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS. And let's go ahead and give this project a name of Core ML Demo. Make sure your language, of course, is Swift. We're going to be working programmatically, no Swift UI, so UI kit and storyboard for your lifecycle and interface, respectively. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, we are going to expand our Xcode window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. Let's go ahead and also pick a simulator here. We'll stick with the 12 Pro Max. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a run to make sure we can build and get this showing up like so. And we're also gonna start by bringing in a core ML model. So I have a uh, Google model here, which is available online. It's called Google Net Places. You can just do a Google search for it, no pun intended to find it, but we're just gonna grab it and drag it into our project. I'll also link this project down below. So go ahead and do that and copy it in. So a ML model extension on a file is specific to Core ML, as you can imagine. And when you click on it, you'll see all this uh, information here in Xcode about, you know, this particular model is a neural network classifier, its size, you know, there's a lot of information about it here. You can go through it, but basically it's, uh, you know, an Xcode friendly file type, which encapsulates, you know, the machine learning model that we're going to be using. The other thing I'm going to bring in is a small extension Swift file that I wrote beforehand so we can focus on the machine learning part of it in this video. So go ahead and bring that in and we will go through it really quickly uh, right now, I guess. Why not? So this just has two extensions on UI image. Um, the first one here will basically take in an image and just resize it. Uh, we're going to need this because the machine learning model expects the image to be a particular size. And this other uh, function here, which is uh, much larger, uh, basically converts the image into a core video pixel buffer. So you don't need to know what this is, but the idea is uh, it takes the image object and it converts it into a buffer uh, of bytes in memory that is uh, compatible with the machine learning model. So you can uh, just grab these extensions. Um, you know, they're not particularly uh, complicated, but you know, it'll save us some time. So Let's go ahead and start building out, um, you know, this machine learning model hooked up to this app. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do here is import core ML, which is, you know, pretty standard. We need machine learning. And let's talk a little bit about what we want uh, to do with our UI here. So we want to have an image uh, and we tap on it. We're basically going to uh, show the built-in uh, image picker. And then when we tap an image and select it, will not only update that image, but basically we'll run that image through our machine learning model, which should basically classify, you know, what is uh, the image? So what's the basic theme of it? So um, we will basically need two things. We're gonna need an image view and a label to show the output. 
So let's go ahead and create that here. I'm just gonna do it programmatically to be nice and quick about it. Feel free to use storyboard or whatever floats your boat. We'll go ahead and create this here. Fairly straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and return it. I'll also go ahead and say the content mode on this guy is going to be scale uh, aspect two. Let's go with fit. And the other thing we need is a label. So we'll go ahead and create that as well in a similar fashion. It's a UI label, just like that. Let's go ahead and return it here. We'll also go ahead and align the text to be centered. Let me go ahead and say number of lines is zero. So it line wraps, and that's probably all that we need. Now let's go ahead and view to load and add these as sub views. So the label, the image view, and let's see, what else do we need to do? We also need to lay them out. But before we get there, let's do some of the more interesting stuff first. So you might be wondering of, okay, well, how do you actually run the image through the machine learning model? So it's really trivial actually, um, especially with core ML. So I'm gonna create a function here. And this function is basically going to be, uh, let's call it analyze, analyze image. And it's going to take in a image, which we'll say is a UI image optional. And what I'll do in here is we first want to basically resize the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, resized. And we can go ahead and say uh, image. And we're gonna use one of those extensions that we brought in, which is you know resize. And the size that we want is I believe 224 by 224. Um, the ML model actually specifies the sizes that uh, you know it supports. You can go in and go ahead and tweak them, but we're not going to do that for the sake of time and the fact that it's not really important. So once we've resized it, we then want to get the you know buffer out of uh, the pixel buffer out of this image. So I'm going to go ahead and say resized, and we want the CV uh, pixel buffer, not CG C. V get CV pixel buffer is the other uh, extension that we have. And now what we can do is actually create an instance of our model. So we're going to go ahead and do that in a do catch block because creating the model can actually throw an exception. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is an ML model, or you could just call it model. And we're going to say try to create the Google Net Places model. And we're going to create it with a configuration since the other initializer is deprecated. And you'll see that this configuration takes in a object called ML model configuration. So let's go ahead and call that config. And I'm going to declare it right up above. We'll say config. And this is going to be ML model configuration. Now on the configuration, you can add a bunch of uh, properties and you know tweak it. We're not going to do that for the sake of you know keeping this focused. But once you've created a model, we then need to create an input for the model. So the input is basically going to be a Google uh, Lens Places input, this one right here. And we're gonna input this with a scene image. And you see here that the parameter that it wants is a core video pixel buffer. And what we can do is we can just take the buffer up above and pass it in. Now, both of these functions here return optional. So what we wanna do is we wanna unwrap so we don't get this error down here. So what I'll actually do is let's combine all of these into one guard. So I'm going to make uh, that into a single statement like so. And what I can go ahead and do is we can say guard lets. We want to go ahead and do this whole thing. And let me go ahead and fix this. So this uh, should not be resized. Let's go ahead and get rid of this thing and this additional um question mark that we have and if we line break hopefully everything will be looking good so what this is going to do is this is first going to resize the image and then it's going to grab a pixel buffer uh, off of that resized image as well as unwrap it then we can use the buffer down here in our input like so so now that we have our input what we want to do is we want to get the results so we're going to say uh, output is model and what we're going to do is we're going to predict on this model with the given input so here you can see um, if you read the description here it says make a prediction using the structured uh, interface which is kind of not a great description but um, this wants the input and this actually also throws if i'm not mistaken so we need to prefix this with a try uh, if we get any error we're going to go ahead and print it down here 
And let's see, so this output, if you actually start typing it, you'll see in the autocomplete that its type is a Google Net Places output. Um, so that's not very helpful for us. What we want to actually do is get the you know, classified uh, scene of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and say let text. And this is going to be output dot, I believe there is a scene label. And the description of this guy is most likely scene label as string value. And then what we're going to do is simply assign that to our label. So I'm going to say label.text is text. Go ahead and hit command V. And that's actually all there is to it in terms of you know, feeding information to this ML model and getting the output. Let's go ahead and take care of putting together our pretty simple UI and that we could test this um, with the built-in uh, images in the Photos app. So let's go ahead and lay out our two subviews. So what I'm going to do is let's put the uh, image view at the top here. We'll just make it nice and large. We'll say 20 view safe area top. We'll make this the entirety of the width minus 40. And I guess the height will be the same thing. So we get a nice square. Whoops, let's go ahead and copy that and paste that right there. And let me go ahead and add the label down below it. So we'll say the frame of the label is going to be 20. The Y will be the view safe area top uh, plus basically uh, the size of the image. Uh, plus we'll say 10. We'll say the view is the entirety of the width subtracting um, 40. So it's nice and centered. We'll say width minus 40 and the height will just say 100. Hopefully that doesn't overflow the height of the screen. I'm also going to give this a default uh, image just to start off with. So we can actually see something is there. We'll give it a system image of perhaps a photo. If you're not familiar with system images, they are the SF symbols that are built into iOS. So here is our image and uh, we don't have any text in our label, so we can't actually see it. So we'll go ahead and say select image. Go ahead and give that a run and we'll see select image down here. Now we want a way to actually select an image. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add a tap gesture on the image view. So we'll say tap is a UI tap gesture recognizer. We're going to go ahead and instantiate this with a target of self and a selector of did tap image. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and add this tap onto the image view. So we'll say go ahead and add that tap just like that. And let's see, it looks like this is yelling at me because we have not created that selector yet. Because Xcode loves to be super impatient. So there is uh, that function that's going to get called when we tap on it. And what we want to do in here is basically show an image picker. So I'm just going to create an image picker controller. If we're not familiar with image pickers, uh, don't worry about it too, too much. It's not all that important. Um, the point is, um, you know, pick an image and feed it into your uh, into your uh, ML model. So I actually have a separate video on image pickers as well, if you wanna go ahead and take a peek there. So we'll say the source type on this is photo library. And we also wanna say picker.delegate itself to get the result back out. As such, we wanna go ahead and conform to that delegate. So it's gonna be the image picker controller delegate. And we also want the UI navigation controller delegates so let's see ui navigation controller delegate now the image picker has two functions on it if i'm not mistaken let's go ahead and put them down here i think the first one is if the image picker was canceled and the other one is uh, if the user selected uh, a image so in this case we're not going to do anything we'll just say canceled and in this case, we want to actually get the image out. So I'm going to say guard let image is from our info. We're going to get UI image uh, picker controller dot info key dot. I believe this is let's go with original image. And we're going to get this and cast it to an image just like that. And once we've got the image out, and I know I ran through this fairly quickly, we're going to go ahead and assign it to our image view. And of course, we're going to call our fancy new function here, analyze image, passing in that image. So let's do a quick recap because I know I flew through that. So let me actually build before uh, I assume it's correct. So what we're doing here is we have our two subviews, our image view and our label. Um, we create them in these anonymous closures 
fairly straightforward. We add them as subviews. We go ahead and create a tap gesture recognizer and add it to our image view. Uh, this way, whenever we tap on it, we'll get that image picker. We're going ahead and uh, you know creating that image picker, sending the source type to be the photo library instead of the camera, and also assigning the delegate, which makes sense. We're laying out our uh, image picker, rather our image view and our label programmatically here with uh, a frame X, Y, width and height. Let's just line break this to make it nice and clean. And let's see, this is our fancy function, which goes ahead and passes that image into our machine learning model to analyze it. Once it's analyzed, we go ahead and assign the labels text to whatever the result of the analysis is. And then down here, all we're doing is uh, implementing the uh, actual image picker delegate functions. Uh, I think it dismisses by itself when either of these are called, but if not, let's just be on the safe side and just add a dismiss call to the picker in both functions. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see this in action. So cool, so here's our app. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this and we should see an image picker. And if you're not seeing it, um, that means that I broke something and we need to go test it. So let's see what's going on here. So let's see, one thing that we might wanna do is make sure uh, is user interaction enabled is true. And I'm gonna say tap dot required uh, number of taps, I believe. Let's see, uh, there should be a number of taps on here, which is one by default if I'm not mistaken, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. It's gonna go ahead and tap on this image and we should see the picker, which we're not seeing. Ah, oh, there it is, it's just slow. Okay, let's try that one more time for my sanity. So we'll tap on that. We're gonna select this image here, which is looking pretty good goes ahead and updates it, and uh, it is a botanical garden according to this machine learning model, which is uh, probably pretty correct. Let's try that one more time. Let's select um, a different one. I feel like it's gonna say these are all botanical gardens, but um, this one is an iceberg, which is not really correct, but let's try that again with a different one. Uh, this one is the coast, uh, which I guess it's correct. Um, the coast is on water. Let's try this one here. This one is a wheat field, which is probably not right either, but you guys get the point of how this is working. Um, this is an aquarium, which I guess I see why I picked that, but you know, I digress. Um, this is how you would set up a machine learning model and feeding it data. Now, obviously the better your model is, the better your you know, predictions and outputs will be. Um, that just goes with any type of machine learning in general. Um, I plan on doing a playlist on this channel of a bunch of different types of, you know, machine learning techniques and also how you can create and train your own models since um, I think there's not a lot of content on this, especially on the client side on iOS and Android. Um, there's a lot of like backend stuff of, you know, like creating models of Python and, you know, TensorFlow, but you know, I've been spending a ton of time with this stuff lately and I find it pretty fascinating. So. Um, I'm going to link this project down below. Uh, I'll toss it up on GitHub. Feel free to, you know, download it. Um, the other thing I'll call out and share here is there is a website, which I will also link down below, um, rather not a website, a repo on GitHub. And this repo actually has, um, it's called Awesome Core ML, and it has a list of uh, a bunch of different machine learning models and a description of what they are. So, Somebody, uh, you know, took the liberty of compiling this list and there's a bunch of really cool ones in here. Like, um, I think I saw one in here where, you know, you can give it a picture of somebody's face and it'll tell you their emotion. Um, there's a car recognition one. There's also one in here to recognize different plants. So if you've ever seen any of those apps where you can go ahead and, you know, take a picture of any type of flower or plants and it tells you, you know, what it is. Um, all this stuff is in here. So definitely take a look at this as well. I'll link it down below. But that's all I've got for you guys. Um, hopefully I didn't go through this too, too fast. Uh, fairly straightforward. Let me know in the comments down below if you think machine learning is interesting and if more importantly, if you'd be interested to learn more about it. Um, and definitely like the video if you haven't done so already. Super appreciate it. It helps the channel grow uh, tremendously. And subscribe if you haven't done so already for daily iOS and Swift uploads. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.